labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. The subject this morning is the fact that what we believe and what we preach and the concepts and the truths of God's Word are timeless. Freedom and liberty are a gift from God. And it's nothing that anybody can take away from us. Because they didn't give us those gifts. They come from God. We're living in an age, postmodern era, where everything that we have been taught is being disputed. And truthfully, history is being rewritten. And that's why I think Memorial Day has special significance. Some years ago, I decided to go see my grandfather's grave. Uh, my grandfather served in World War II, and he and my grandmother are buried at Arlington. And I thought, well, you know, not a big deal. We got the little find a grave thing, put an app on our phone, we'll get right to it. And I think my wife lost at least one toenail that day, uh, walking around Arlington. What an incredible place. And uh, we wanted to catch one of the flag-laying uh, ceremonies, which we were able to do, and then the wreath-laying ceremonies at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. While we were there, there was an act of funeral service. And we didn't go and disturb what they were doing, but we were able to see from a distance the service. And uh, what an incredible incredible thing to see. My grandfather and grandmother were cremated, so in order to find where they were at, it's different than the plots where the graves are. They have The best way that I can describe them is they look like these bunkers. There's seven of them. And then locating which bunker he was in. And it's walled all the way around so that people driving by cannot see into uh, the walls where uh, folks are, their cremains are inserted. They're set up very beautiful inside, almost like gardens, and it's set up like a maze. You kind of walk through it. It's not like a straight shot through and through. Uh, there's a series of courtyards, and um, all of the different graves uh, there inside these uh, crematoriums, uh, or these where the cremains are, are all facing. Each of them have a fountain with flowers. It's very, very beautiful. It was a very nice day, kind of like today. Uh, the day that we went and we found where my grandfather and my grandmother are buried and uh, they're they're on the highest row which if you're five six everything's high so it's up probably about right here is about how high it was for me to be able to touch uh, my grandfather's uh, plaque and then I backed away from it and just sat down at the fountain. Very beautiful. I took a little video of it. You can hear the water. It's very quiet because of the way the bunker is set up. So I was sitting there uh, with the fountain at my back, just kind of looking up. And it's, it's walls all the way around. And I was kind of looking at his spot where he's buried. But then I just kind of took my eyes backwards a little bit and just noticed... I mean, there's literally, probably in that little courtyard, several thousands of people laid to rest there. And really, just that amount of individuals, people who have served us, fought for our liberty, it was just amazing. For my grandfather, World War II, but there were folks from all different wars in that, in that area. We're living in a day and age that doesn't want to remember those things. And as I mentioned already, history is being rewritten. And I feel like the message today is needful for the day and the hour that we live in. But I think it's also appropriate for this weekend. I believe also that our hearts ought to be burdened for the next generation. For some of you... Let's be honest, you have more days behind you than you have ahead of you. And uh, I would count myself in that. This is my birthday month coming up. And uh, my daughter-in-law has taught me that. 
Uh, it used to be my birthday, but now I can celebrate my birthday month. And uh, that's, that's going to start on Tuesday, so I'm excited to celebrate my birthday month. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. And I realized that with my, one of my big birthdays coming up, that there are more days behind me than ahead of me. You say, well, pastor, you're middle-aged. I disagree with that. Uh, there's not too many hundred-year-old men running around, so I think we have to back that up a little bit. Middle age for me was probably in my late 30s. But for those that come behind us, the world that they are growing up in is vastly different than the world we grew up in. I mean, when I, when I grew up, uh, there weren't any car seats in the car. Uh, my dad and mom, they rode in the front of the pickup truck. My dad had a topper on his pickup, and he built benches. There were six kids. He built benches in the back of the truck with a topper on it, and we rode in the back. Uh, that's where we rode. And uh, uh, there was no window between the truck and the, and the camper top, and I think my parents are like that. Uh, there was a, I mean, there was no sliding window, no access. Uh, there was a window you could see, and we'd knock on that window, uh, but my parents couldn't hear it because that was one more window, the back of the truck window. And I think they like that. But we understand that those that are growing up behind us have a much different view and even a distorted view from the world we grew up in. And if we wanted to back it up even more from me, those that would be my parents' age, vastly different also. Understanding those things... David, the psalmist, listed some things in the book of Psalms to help us to understand that with the truths of God's Word, there is a timelessness about it, and there ought to be a remembrance of the truths of the Word of God. So that's where in the book of Psalms 145, uh, the scripture teaches us these things, and we will take a look at these, and we'll attempt to remember those things that are unto all generations. So would you do this with me? If you're able to, would you stand as we read God's, God's word? We're going to read the word of God, and we're at Psalm 145. I'd like to read back and forth, and we'll have a word of prayer, and I'll get into the message. I'll read the first verse, and then join me on the second, and we'll alternate that way. Psalm 145, the scripture says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Read along. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Notice the timelessness of it. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Ready? One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Now I want you to notice that the, it's forever and ever, but the way that that perpetuates is what the verse we just read said, shall declare thy mighty acts. It's our responsibility then to extend those things down to the next generation. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Ready? And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. I have that verse written in front of my Bible. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts, the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, 
and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee. Thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name. Notice the wording, forever and ever. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Jamie Warwick if he'll take us to prayer, and then you can have a seat. Meeting here with us and just just praise you, Lord. Thank you for this uh, memorial we give in honor of our fallen soldiers, Lord, and just the freedom you give us. Just pray this in your presence. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated and thank you for reading along. God's truths are for all generations. For all generations. It's not something that we are looking at and thinking about just for now. But the truths of God's word are for all time. Psalm 33 said, The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Psalm 100 and verse number 5, and I love this verse. I was meditating on this verse this week. For the Lord is good, his mercy endureth, say it with me, forever. His truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 117 says this, For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Listen to what Jesus said about how the truths that we know, the liberties that we know, the blessings that we've enjoyed, how those things are to be handed down. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Uh, people say, you know, pastor, people just don't want to hear the truth of the word of God anymore. I disagree. Jesus said that the word of God is more relevant than it ever has been before. As you read through the epistles of Paul, I promise you, when you look at the degradation and the declination of nations, it's as if Paul wrote those epistles in 2021. It's so relevant. It's so incredible and so ac applicable. Psalm 119 says this, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It says, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth. We know that the truths, the liberties, the freedoms that are given to us by God are for all generations. But I want you to notice also that God's praise and praiseworthiness is for all generations. Now, I don't want you to miss this. Because as we go into Memorial Day and we understand the liberty that we enjoy, we understand that we do not enjoy liberty as a gift of ourselves to ourselves. We didn't give freedom to ourselves as a nation. Now folks sacrifice for it and we honor that sacrifice and folks uh, gave up so that we could enjoy it. They endured so we can enjoy. But the truth is that the praise for liberty, the praise for freedom, the praise for the freedoms that you enjoy, go to God. Psalm 45 says this, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. 
That's why it's so fitting, and I love it. Uh, oftentimes when we go to these uh, different Memorial Day services, there's, there are prayers that either are read or are given. I love that. You say, well, how does that fit in? Because, friend, if we don't acknowledge him for what he's given to us, he has no responsibility to continue to give it to us. Therefore, shall the people praise thee forever and ever. And if our liberty and our freedom are at risk for any reason, it is because of the ingratitude of God's people. God told his people, remember what I have done for you. Remember it. Remember it. You say, I don't like to look at those images. I don't like to look at those things. Those things are disturbing or they bother me. Friend, I want you to see the ugly truth. That war is ugly. And gaining of peace is not done because a bunch of people sit around the table and say, I love you. The Bible talks about the price and the cost for peace. And it's relentless pursuit of upholding And standing on guard for freedom. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Going way back to the inception of our country. It just simply did not make sense that United States would come out on top and formulate a nation. How could a nation of people that had literally just barn tools defeat the English army. At that time, a, a world power, that it was said this about the English empire at that time, that the sun did not set on the English empire. There was always somewhere in the world where the sun was shining on the far reaches of the English empire. But God was in it. And God gave us liberty and freedom so that we could worship and enjoy liberty and freedom. Listen to what David tells us about how God's praise and his praiseworthiness is for all generations. Psalm 79 says, So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Every time you see a flag this weekend... Every time you drive by some, somebody's house, it's got a little flag either uh, stuck in the front yard or they have a, some kind of patriotic bunting or they have a flag posted out on the post of their house. Whatever it is, that you would thank the Lord for the gift of liberty and the gift of freedom. David said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. So we understand then that God's precepts are for all generations. Over and over again in that passage we read together, bless his holy name forever and ever. As if forever isn't enough, right? Forever and ever. The idea that it just keeps going, it keeps continuing. And that's what our Praise ought to be. So his precepts are for all generation. His praise and his praiseworthiness is for all generations. Can I ask you just an honest question? Are you in the habit of taking your children, or maybe now your grandchildren, or do I take another step, your great-grandchildren, and just teaching them a few things Praising God for the liberty and freedoms that we enjoy as a nation. I promise you this, most of them aren't learning it in school. Most of them are learning in school that our nation is something that they ought to not be proud of. That they ought to not like. That they ought to be opposed to. And boy, those teachers that teach that, they need an exit visa. Let's send them somewhere else. I mean that. There's a lot of wonderful teachers that are doing a great job. But somebody that stands opposed to the nation that clothes and feeds them ought to go down the road. I just believe that. Not only is, are his precepts for all generations, his praise and his praiseworthiness, 
But I want you to understand, this is, this is so hopeful for me in 2021. His power is for all generations. His power. You see, the same God that did it can do it again. The same God that did it can do it again. Psalm 145 says, and we read it, Thy kingdom is... Look at verse 13. I want you to fill out that phrase to the comma. Thy kingdom is, ready? An everlasting kingdom. God is alive and well. He's alive and well. Thy dominion endureth through all generations. Psalm 146 says, The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Then David said, Praise you the Lord. Amen to that. Psalm 102 says this, But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. How can we, as Bible believers, believing that, what we enjoy and have enjoyed is a gift from God. How can we propagate that? How can we extend that for another generation behind us? I want you to see it. First of all, a life of consistency. Would you look in verse number 1 and 2? We read it. I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Look at the first two words of verse 2. Would you read them with me? Every day. Read it again. Every day. Read it again. Every day. Here's the secret of propagating the truth of God's word. Here's the secret of propagating freedom and liberty. Say the two words with me. Ready? Every day. That's what your children need to see. Did you know if you have adult children, if you have adult children, they need to see in your life consistency. I watch when my sons come over to my house. Uh, you know, sooner or later they open the fridge. They just kind of look around. I don't think they're looking for anything. They're just kind of checking out what the old man has in the fridge. Then they go over to the cupboard. Uh, the cupboard is the area where Drew used to steal food from. This is the worst food snitch ever. I did it at his house and I got in trouble for it. I did. So then there was a new family rule. <laughs> I was informed of it. Dad, when you come over to our house, the food that we want you to have, we'll put it out on the counter for you. <laughs> like the circle, come around full circle. But the point is that they're watching. It's that consistency. Every day, David said, will I bless thee. It's hard to propagate our Christianity. It's hard to propagate our spirituality when what we live doesn't match what we say. It's hard to propagate our spirituality. It's hard to propagate our Christianity when the way we live every day does not match what we say. I think especially children are hypersensitive to hypocrisy. And the whole thing of saying, well, don't do what I, don't do, what I do, do what I say, it really falls flat. A consistent life, a consistent life, every day will I bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. We cannot impact the next generation by being a weekend Christian. You have to live it. It's got to be real deal. It's got to be re real deal. Little boy came home and said, Dad, 
He said, I learned that when we get saved, that God moves into us, that he lives inside of us. And he said, that's right, son. Exactly what your teacher told you. That's right. He said, Dad, do you think if something as big as God were to live inside of me, that some of them would be sticking out somewhere? And that's exactly right. That's how we show that what we have is genuine. It's sticking out of us. We have to be somebody that walks with the Lord and have a life that's consistent every day. A life of consistency is a must. David said he had extolled the Lord every day. He lifted him high. David allowed God to be his king every day. David said, I will bless the Lord every day, not just on good days, but every day. David said, I will bless the name of the Lord every day. I will praise the greatness of the Lord every day. David said, I will search out the greatness of God every day. A life of consistency. But notice also, in order to propagate this to the next generation, we have to have a life that knows how to communicate. Verses 3 through 12. We're not going to reread all of them because we did read them. But he says, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. Notice verse number 4. If you wanted to uh, attach a verse to this point, that we communicate one generation shall praise thy works. Read that two-word phrase. That's an infinity. That's a, not an infinity. That's a, help me with it. The kind of phrase it is. I just, it's a what? It's a prepositional phrase too. Notice, ready? To another. And shall declare thy mighty acts. How important is it that we tell the next generation about the Lord? How important is it? I'm going to be honest with you here. In the last five years, uh, we've done a lot of research trying to learn a little more about my dad's family because my dad really did not tell us a lot about his family. So a lot of what we've learned about his family has been secondhand, and it has prompted me to ask my mom questions, and my mom said, oh yeah, you know, and she's telling me different things. And somewhere in the process of learning these things, I thought to myself, you know, my dad could have easily kind of relayed these things to us, but he didn't. I'm not beating him up for that, and he, he's up there saying, easy. Easy. But how important is it to tell the next generation about the works of God in your life? And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of the inheritance in the Mount Ephraim on the north side of the hill, Gaash. And also, all that generation was gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them. This is a generation of people that went into the promised land, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. How did that happen? Because they didn't communicate it. I hope you communicate your faith to your family. I hope you communicate your faith to your grandchildren. Just say, hey, I want you to know this. Of all the things in my life, and I've had some wonderful things in my life, and you're part of those wonderful things, but I want you to know that what the Lord has done for me tops everything. And just detail some of that. If these individuals didn't know the Lord or the works of the Lord, certainly there was a miscommunication. They found time to talk about everything else under the sun except for the works of the Lord. They found time to teach them about everything else, but failed to talk about what God had done. It is so imperative that we understand that the communication of the things, the works of God, goes to all generation. I'm going to hurry to the last. Not only should we have this life of consistency, 
Not only should we be able to communicate the works of the Lord, but in order to pass down our liberties and freedoms to the next generation, we need to also live a life of contentment. Would you say that word with me? Just the C word, ready? Contentment. It's a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. Scripture says, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Jesus told the Roman soldiers, how much do you make? So they told him. He said, be content with your wages. <laughs> Paul said, I have learned to be content. Kind of a big deal in scriptures. Contentment. One of the reasons why a younger generation seems to be looking over the fence is because their parents are. Don't be surprised if spiritually you're sitting on the fence that your kids fall off the fence if you've not taught your children contentment. Contentment. There's such great value to living a contented life. Verse 15, The eyes of all wait upon thee, thou givest them their meat. Read the next few words, ready? In due season. We live in a generation, we want everything now. I mean, right now. Since the United States became a nation, this is just a little fact I'm going to throw out there. Since the United States became a nation, way back in the late 1700s to present day, 2021, one quarter of the national debt has been generated in the last 15 months. In the last 15 months. Why? Because we want everything right now. Brother Bayless tells me, he kind of keeps his pulse on this. He said, well, everybody's getting their checks. He said, I got to order more TVs. I have to order more TVs. That's the number one thing. Isn't it, Brother Mark? The number one thing. Now, you say, Pastor, are you scolding people if they upsize their TV? Hey, if you want to upsize your TV, go ahead. You know, if you want a bigger TV than Pastor, that's fine. It's fine. I'm not scolding you for that. I'm talking about contentment. Happy is the people that is in such a case, yea, happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Where does contentment come from? Knowing that He is everything. David himself was a king, but he recognized that he was not in competition with God. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Thy dominion endureth through all generations. God was con uh, David was content with how the Lord rescues. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raise up all those that bow down to him. And David was content to rest with God being his defense. I got people, they're just sending me emails constantly. Pastor, did you read this? You got to read this. You got to see this. And they're linking me stuff. You got to see this. And I think, you know, it's terrible. I agree. But I tell you what I rest in. I'm not resting in 2024. I'm resting right there. Our contentment. And to be content with God's resources, the eyes of all that wait on thee, thou givest them their meat in due season. If we are going to be a nation of people that remember freedom and liberties, It'll only be because we are a nation of people that remember the Lord. Lifetime of labor is still worth it all.